Good evening and welcome back to New Ostrog, the monastery, the Canadian Orthodox Monastery. And we continue our uh, exploration, the Old Testament is about you. I think we need to pause for another little history lesson because sometimes I get questions about these incidents and how they fit together. So I'm going to um, pause for a, a few moments in the flow of the narrative and talk a little more about the experience of Moses. We discussed why Moses had fled from Egypt and also discussed something of his self-discovery in the Sinai wilderness. But there are some very important points that also need to be pointed out. Surely it was by God's will that Moses found his way to the area where the Midianites under tribal leader Jethro were feeding their flocks and found his way to the well where Jethro's daughters would come to water their flocks and take water home. If you remember the story, Moses was there nearby and the daughters of Jethro, the seven daughters of Jethro, had come to get water for the flocks. And some of the uh, shepherds, perhaps from another tribe or another branch of the tribe, the male shepherds, had come and were harassing the girls and bothering them. And Moses came out from the place where he was resting and started probably shouting and screaming at them and they thought he was a madman or something and fled. In any case, he saved the girls and then they took him into the camp uh, of Jethro. Now the important thing for us to know is that the Midianites were descendants of Abraham through his second wife Keturah and that living in their nomadic isolation in the Sinai wilderness they were in a good position to maintain the traditions that had come down to them from Moses. So they would have received uh, some knowledge of the covenant. They would have also received an understanding of God. And uh, Jethro then, as the tribal leader, would have been also served as a priest and made the offerings to, to God in the wilderness. This is very significant for us to know because it is here, in the time that he, uh, he married the eldest daughter of Jethro, Zipporah, that Moses would have learned all those traditions that came down from Abraham. And even the stories that Abraham had told when he came from Chaldea. So some of the stories would have taken Moses all the way back through Haran and back to Ur of the Chaldees. And so uh, these stories, which Moses received by tradition, would form the basis of the later book, which we call Genesis. And this is important for us to remember that Moses spent something like 40, 50, 60 years in, among the mediums. And he learned and absorbed all these stories and traditions that would later be recorded by him, likely by him, or by scribes traveling with him. And uh, that it took all of this time for Moses to fully, first of all, find out who he was as an Israelite from the cousins of the Israelites, the mediums, and uh, to, to hear about the covenant, about the promised land, and all these other things, so that he could know precisely what it was he was supposed to do with Israel when he led them out of bondage. Where were they to go? Why were they to go there? What connection did they have with that land? What uh, connection did that have with the God who would shortly reveal himself to Moses? And th this connection of the Midianites and Jethro with Abraham, very important to us in filling in this whole story, this whole picture. And of course, Moses might have received some of the traditions still in Egypt, but remember, he was not raised with his own people. He was raised as a prince of Egypt, and he would have been far more steeped in the Egyptian folklore, Egyptian religion, Egyptian worship. And now uh, he had to be prepared to have all of that 
wiped away and replaced with the revelation that had come through Abraham and his descendants. And the Midianites were in the best position to provide that, but largely because of their isolation, because they were cut off from the Egyptian world, and because they were rather free roaming around from one place to another, and maintaining in a very simple pastoral way the same lifestyle of Abraham. So this is how Moses was formed and shaped for the new calling that God would give him. And doubtless Jethro helped to explain to him who it was who spoke to Moses through the unburning fiery bush. Remember that finally on Sinai God identifies himself to Moses, Eya Asher Eya, uh, I am the one who exists, the being, the existence. So many ways we try to translate that, but if we go back to the time of Abraham and Isaac, we simply find that God was known as the living one who sees me. So here Moses was seen by the living one who identifies himself as the one who is the one who, the living one, really. Uh, ya Asher Ya. And uh, this, as we often translate it, I am that I am. Uh, so this is the story of how Moses is prepared, how he has the knowledge and understanding of the traditions of Abraham and of the promised land and of the covenant between Israel and, and God. So that when he goes back to Egypt and expresses these things, the Israelites would recognize many of these stories as having been handed down to them from generation to generation and be a little easier for Moses to convince them to return with him back to the Promised Land. That in itself was no easy task. It was not simply con convincing Pharaoh to let them go. It was convincing them to actually go. And this is the story that we take up a little later. But we wanted to establish this historical framework so that the connections and the understanding of the story can be more complete. And so we can understand why Jethro might be referred to as a priest of the Most High God because, of course, following the traditions of Abraham and the revelation to Abraham and keeping that those traditions, that worship, that understanding of God, which Abraham had passed on to his sons. So uh, Moses is being reformed, formed first in the nob nobility of Egypt and the traditions and customs and understandings of the Egyptians, now to be reformed again at the hands, through the voice, of descend direct descendants of Abraham. So uh, I think we have a much better picture now of the story, as when we find that Moses would have gone back to um, Egypt in the time of the reign of Tutmose. And in the summertime, Tutmose would have been near Avaris. Uh, there was a royal palace on one of the islands in the delta, near that area which the scripture calls Goshen, and would have been in, in the region of Avaris, which was the center of the Hebrew existence in Egypt. The uh, Egyptians by this time were de really dependent upon their bonded servants and slaves. They had given so much, like Rome would later, the Egyptians had really become dependent on the slaves to maintain the infrastructure of the country and to do much of the agricultural work. So the slaves were a, a very important part of the Egyptian system. And it was not going to be at all easy for Moses to convince Pharaoh to let these people go since they, the Egyptians were so heavily dependent upon them. And uh, now we have a better context, a better framework, a better understanding for continuing this story. 